Europa FM, pe aceeași frecvență cu tine. Bun găsit tuturor! Sunt la o întâlnire cu cel mai important șahist al lumii, Gare Kasparov, dar și cu unul dintre liberalii de frunte ai umanității. O să vorbim atât despre șah, dar și un pic despre politică și, dacă e posibil, despre război. Good afternoon, Mr. Kasparov. Good afternoon. Welcome to Romania. Thank you. Did you enjoy Bucharest? Have you have time to see something? Uh, it's not my first time in Bucharest, but uh, uh, this trip is... Uh, is overwhelmed, uh, actually fully packed with interviews, press conferences, uh, and I, I have to confess, I didn't have 10 minutes to walk around. Talk so around. It's, it's all, you know, moving from one room to another and uh, asking journalists about what TV or radio station they represent. <laughs> what, but what is your feeling when you step in a <clears throat> former com communist city? The right word is former communist city. Yeah. Yes, and, yes, uh, yes, yes, right. And as I said, that was not my first trip to Romania. Yeah. And uh, while, you know, I traveled across the entire Europe and, uh, and for many years, for nearly two decades, I've been uh, uh, warning the world about the dangers coming from Vladimir Putin and uh, uh, about uh, dangers of being complacent and not recognizing these, the, the new realities, the, the changing uh, a geopolitical environment that was working against the interest of democracy. Um, I indicated that in Europe there were three countries uh, that were that had the least of Russian influence. Which are? Which are Lithuania, Poland, and Romania. In Romania. Yeah. Least. L yeah, least. You know, like, again, it's this is it's it's my subjective opinion because even in Latvia and Estonia. Prior to the beginning of the war, they had considerable uh, polit uh, political influence, represented by by MPs and and and, and newspapers that, uh, directly or indirectly, uh, pushed Putin's agenda. So Lithuania, Poland, and Romania were least infected. This is good news. I hope it will be like this in the. Oh no! But now, now, now things changed. I mean, after after. February 24, after the latest round of Putin's aggression against Ukraine, things has, cha has changed dramatically. So even Germany, the country that was the bastion of, of Putin's propaganda, the most reliable Putin's business partner, uh, former Chancellor General, uh, Gerhard Schroeder was working for Putin, Putin payroll. Uh, former Chancellor Angela Merkel spent 16 years in the office to do Putin's bidding. Uh, and uh, she secured uh, uh, Putin's... Uh, commercial energy interest in, 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 in Europe. So, let's take it from here. You wrote about this first, I think, in 2001, in Wall Street Journal. Yes. <clears throat> There is a famous article of yours uh, the, um, saying to the world that Putin is not what it seems, yep. but it's a former KGB, and he rules the world, if I remember correctly, with the combination of communism and tsarism. Is, this is your expression. So your, your analysis was very, very good at the time. It's 20 years from now. Uh, what, what was the right angle? Or how did you find the right angle? You said it. He was a former KGB. And he said there were no such a thing as former KGB agents. His words. I've been always listening to what Putin said because I grew up in the Soviet Union. And I knew from history books and my own experience that dictators always lie about what they have done. But often they're very honest with what they're going to do. Uh, when Hitler published his book Mein Kampf in 1925, I think it was, was published, uh, I don't think he thought he would have a chance to execute his crazy ideas. And who in Germany could imagine that this l lunacy could become German policy and l will lead to the greatest catastrophe in, in, in human history. Mm. But P Putin also had his, his ideas. He immediately, as president of Russia, restored Soviet national anthem. He said many times, the collapse of the Soviet Union was the greatest geopolitical catastrophe of the 20th century. For me, that was a warning. I knew he was too weak to carry this program, but it's all about his, his mindset. And his mindset clearly was, was, was working towards this direction. And every year, him staying in power, every time where he could see the weakness in, 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 in the free world, uh, talking to all the leaders like Bush or uh, for Schroeder and uh, uh, Chirac and, and Sarkozy, and realizing that, oh, 
I can buy some of them. I can influence others. I can play games. And anything I do, and Putin always, you know, looked for opportunity just to grab more territory or more you, influence. You wrote, it did work for him. You wrote about this many times. Yeah, and yeah, you talked just, about yeah. this many times and you had your signals. Uh, there is a famous journalist, Jill Tenet, who said that uh, one dinner at her, her home, yeah. you talked about invasion of Ukraine? Yeah, I talked about many things and I was, I was ostracized by the, by the audience. It was 2015. 2015, yeah. It, in yeah. New York. Uh, just yeah. before, it's, I, probably no, it was probably January 2016. It was at, at the time where Hillary Clinton was about to be nominated and, and, and my warnings about Putin, they were not heeded at all. And moreover, you know, I was, it's not, not an attack. Nobody, nobody wanted to argue with me because I looked like an idiot. You know, as an American say, you know, that's like a crazy uncle at, at uh, um, Thanksgiving party. At that time, your book, Winter is Coming, yes. was already appeared, yes. was already published. I will recommend it to everybody to, mm -hmm. to read it with your, uh, with your sayings about Putin and your vision in the future. So from my perspective, you had the right points for, let's say, about 20 years from now. And I think regarding your expertise, you could have the right points for the future here. Let's analyze the future a little bit. So in this moment, how this war will end? I'm more optimistic about the end of this war now than two months ago because uh, I could see the shift in the position of the free world. I don't think that there, there, are, there is a legitimate political force in any major country. Hungary, probably, is only an exception, but that's not a major player. Uh, United States, Great Britain, Germany, even France, with some doubts, uh, that, that is not ready to uh, support Ukraine to the very end. Uh, Ukrainian victory has become an official goal of, the, of uh, the West. Now, what is still missing is that clear definition of this victory. Uh, I, st I still want to hear that the war should end with a full liberation of Ukrainian territory, Crimea included. Is it possible? Uh, no, it's not possible. It's, it's mandatory. If we want this war to end, we have to make sure that Putin regime will collapse as a result of this war. Because as long as Putin stays in power, the war will not end. You're Russian. Can you explain to us, to Romanians and to the east of Europe, what does it Putin want to, 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 to make it clear for the people here? Oh, I don't think you know, we have to uh, make a guess. He made it very clear in his statements. He wanted to go back to the world of medieval kings, dictators of the 20th century, the world of the spheres of influence. The, this is a language that Stalin and Hitler used to divide Europe. The world where the big guys will decide for smaller countries how to run their domestic or foreign affairs. That's what he has been saying. Ukraine was an obstacle. Ukraine was, you know, for Putin, the same as, as Poland for Stalin. So Something to be destroyed. And, 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 and divided between other countries. So he wants to decide even for Romania, Poland, or Lithuania? Of course. That's, again, it's, 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 this is what he said bluntly uh, uh, in 2007 at Munich Security Conference that it was a time to return to spheres of influence. And he, in his mind, s Russian spheres of influence had to include definitely former Soviet Union and ideally, the Eastern Europe, the former Soviet Empire. For the first time in my life and in my generation, and I suppose yours too, people are freely talking about nuclear bombs. And I know this is, uh, this is happening especially in Russia. I think you follow the Russian press more than me, and you understand because you are Russian, obviously. Is it possible? Is there real talk about nuclear bombs here? Look, uh, uh this is not press in Russia. It's a propaganda machine. Of Russia course. has no yes. press. Uh, it's the, it's, uh, they are mouthpie mouthpieces of, of, of Kremlin. But if we look at what Putin said and did in the past, because you always have to make an analysis, his uh, big statements were often, you know, bluffs. But he could make the bluffs, raise the stakes, and he could see that the opposition, Obama, whoever was on the other side, folded cards. They, okay. they, 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 they didn't want to stay in the game. I think that the talks about, about nukes, WMD, World of Weapons of Mass Destruction, it's a bluff. Um, it doesn't 
feel to me that they are ready to go that far. Because if Putin decides to, to push the button, let's assume. So let's say he's crazy. I don't know whether he is, but let's make this assumption. He still needs other people to be as crazy as him. Because he pushes the button, then he needs other uh, generals and admirals. It's a chain of command that will have to make the final uh, decision to use the, 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 the nukes. If the free will, NATO, is strong enough and shows its resolve to respond, and every general admiral who will be responsible for launching nuclear missile, tactical nuclear missile in Ukraine, will know that his life will end in five minutes because NATO, NATO will strike back, I don't believe for a second Putin will find any kamikaze in Russian uh, 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 army that uh, is willing to die for his uh, geopolitical ambitions. You're a very brave man. You are against uh, the communists, you're against uh, Putin, but uh, in our vision or in our perspective from here, there are uh, a few in Russia, in Russia like you. Why is happening? Can you explain to us why uh, this uh, tyrant is not overthrown by the people in Russia? Who? You could ask the same question about Hitler or about Stalin or about Ceausescu. This is, we, we all have this experience. At a certain point, it's very difficult to, um, almost impossible, to overthrow a tyrant without foreign intervention. Not direct intervention, but for events. Ceausescu was overthrown by Romanians, but in 1989, when the whole Soviet empire collapsed, when the communist was, you know, just was uh, uh, defeated. Uh, um, Soviet Union uh, ceased to exist less than three years after Soviet troops left Afghanistan, recognizing the defeat. It was not uh, a stampede. It was not, you know, total disaster as Americans in, in, in Vietnam, but it still was a defeat. Um, I um, think that uh, Russians will recognize the sad reality of, 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 um, uh, or, uh, of Russia today and will see no other choice but to uh, rise when war is lost. The military defeat is the best uh, medicine to cure uh, illusions and uh, um, national illusions and uh, uh, fantasies. Uh, and I believe that uh, the moment Ukrainian troops enter Crimea uh, and economic sanctions will cripple Russian economy, you will see a different Russia and a very different mood of Russian people. Is he going to leave if he loses? No, dictators. For dictator of that caliber, uh, the end of uh, his rule typically means the end of his life. I will use your strategy and your uh, intelligence and your skills because people are asking, at least here in Romania, this question maybe they are asking all, all over the world, how much is going to, how, how much is going to take this war to, to end? It's Month, years? No, 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 absolutely not years. Look, we, we are now just, it's, it's 11th week of the war. And uh, we, what we could see that Russia, Russian original thrust failed. Yes, they gained some territories, but they failed to take Kiev and, and Kharkiv. Uh, so Ukraine and North, the big cities were safe. And Russia had to regroup. But they are uh, um, uh, announced uh, offense in the east and southeast stalled. Uh, Ukrainian army is getting stronger with every day, with more weapons being supplied, with more Ukrainian men returning and forming you know, new uh, military, military um, mm, uh, uh, divisions. So um, I am not a military expert. And again, I know my, the limits of my ignorance. I don't want to make predictions that go beyond you know, my area of expertise. But analyzing the available data, I would say that uh, Ukrainian troops within next month, uh, Ukrainian troops will, will uh, move into the fence uh, within a month. Let me take you a little bit uh, back in time, maybe 40 years ago. Can you imagine Bucharest having uh, lots of Khrushchevskas or uh, other uh, cities in, uh, in Romania during your famous matches with Anatoly Karpov and lots of kids playing chess in the front of the Khrushchevskavs. Uh, I think you did see something like this in Russia. Maybe it was the same. It was uh, something related to pop culture. It was like this, uh, even for your country. 
Look, uh, chess was very popular in, in Soviet Union, in former Yugoslavia, in, in mm -hmm. Eastern Bloc. Uh, one of the reasons is that there were very, li very little to do. So it's the uh, parents that wanted to uh, offer chance for their kids, they had to look for some sport, uh, uh, art, uh, music, uh, uh, because you couldn't do, uh, you couldn't expect the same kind of careers that were available in the free world. Now things changed. It's, uh, it's, not, it's not the same, but the number of kids playing chess today is a thousand times more than it used to be. You don't see them because you don't have, they don't have to play on the streets. They play on computers. You made pop culture with uh, twice, I say, with that uh, famous movie, uh, The Queen's Gambit. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, <laughs> but do you imagine that uh, maybe in the 80s, uh, you became uh, so popular and entered in pop culture because you're the younger guy who was opposing to the system? Did you feel it? Oh, yeah, absolutely. In the Soviet Union, I remember many people believed after my, my victory in the World Championship match in 1985, that uh, that's, that, was, that was hope that things could change. If Karpov could be beaten, if Garry Kasparov, a, a, a rebel from Baku, half Armenian, half Jewish, could win the match, beating Russian champion in Moscow, maybe that offered us a chance that the entire system could be revamped. Were you aware about this? Oh, absolutely, yes. Yeah. I, I, so, yeah, I knew about it, and I feel very proud about it. So that's why I thought it was my duty to join nascent Russian pro-democracy movement. Because even being very young, 24, 25, when it just was the beginning of, the, of this uh, pro-democracy um, activities in Russia, I knew that world champion status, the position of the world champion, which in the Soviet Union was you know, almost like high priest, uh, because okay. chess was chess was the big game. Uh, the Soviet champions they they were symbols of the intellectual superiority of communist regime over decadent West. And being a world champion, even the very young champion, I thought I had to be engaged because it's it was the best way to encourage people to get in. Uh, if I were silent, that would be a wrong message because I was protected. I mean, I, let's be honest. I mean, I I knew that the title offered me protection. They didn't did touch you, the KGB yeah, or Yeah, because, because I was a world champion, and it's the, it was like a trap. So this is, they, 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 they had to uh, revere the world champion, but they, they were horrified by my political statements. But because of the Gorbachev time and things were changing, they didn't have much time but, to concentrate on me. But do you think about what if you didn't win the world championship? Which one? <laughs> the Is first one, the first one. The first one is in in eighty four. Uh, if I would have, okay, it would be a big psychological trauma to me because I was losing five to nil, and uh, mm -hmm. God forbid, losing six to nil might be really devastating. Uh, so, but it it would be purely psychological. Losing afterwards, you know, because uh, when the first match was abruptly closed, and then I made my statements and I challenged the sport authorities first. Mm -hmm. So every time, you know, I played a World Championship match in 85, 86, I made new and new statements and made myself, you know, as the center of this, uh, not resistance, but intellectual opposition to, 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 to the regime. And of course, you know, in, let's say, 87, not winning the last game in Sevilla, losing the title, I could be facing some, some consequences. I don't know how dramatic consequences, because it was still 87, 88, Gorbachev's time, but I... I had many powerful enemies uh, in the Soviet Union and even in, 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 in Russia because I was independent, I was pro-Western, and I, never, um, I, ne I was never shy to express my views about, about the in injustice and wrongdoings. I'm very curious. You could have choose for your nationality uh, because you're half Armenian, half... Uh, Jewish, but look, I'm, I'm, but I'm, I'm but a you, you Russian said, speaker, yes. Yes. And you say you're a Russian? And yeah, look, because it's, uh, Soviet Union was the successful Russian empire. It's, it's a melting pot. Um, my father was Jewish, my mother was Armenian, my native tongue is Russian. I uh, grew up in Russian culture. When Soviet Union collapsed, I moved to Moscow because it was the capital of the country where I was born. Uh, yeah, I was like, you know, just a uh, citizen of the British Empire, maybe, okay, born in, 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 in Sri Lanka. So when empire collapsed, you moved to your, to your, uh, to your motherland. And uh, I moved to Moscow. 
And I feel now that I am Russian, yes, um, though I have a Croatian passport since, since, I, had, yes, I, since I had to leave Russia, I, I uh, asked for, you know, for some help. And Croatia, the country that I've been um, helping uh, 30 years ago, I uh, was probably the first uh, prominent um, foreigner who supported Croatian uh, fight for independence. When I was in Dianit, they helped me with, with a passport since I, again, I've been Do going you? to Croatia every summer since 1993. Uh, and, uh, um, and I'm following this, this, uh, this line of questioning. Uh, but I, um, unlike my wife, or my kids, I, I do not have American passport, only green card. So you won't have, you don't want it? No, I, because I don't believe that uh, it would be fair to remain myself as a potential political force in Russia having American passport. I need a Croatian passport to travel, but it's a Croatian so neutral country. I'm, 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 I'm legitimate uh, immigrant in America, I have a green card. My family, they say have American passports, but I'm, I'm independent. So you hope you will come back? I think it's my moral duty because Putin regime will collapse. And while I don't have intentions of just you know, spending the rest of my life in Russian politics, I think the first two, three years after Putin, my country will need people like me to help it to recover from this disaster. Because it's, it's not that, oh, Putin is out, we have elections. No, you cannot have elections because the country is, is in ruins. You don't have uh, the laws. You don't have proper constitution. You don't, you don't have an infrastructure to, to make this transfer from dictatorship into, into democracy. And I believe that uh, the first, uh, uh, the, the transition team should be co um, composed of people that will be willing to do the job, but with, with clear um, commitment not to run for politics. I think that's the only way to save Russia from repeating these old mistakes. The two, two rules. One is we have to eradicate imperial virus. Russia should cease becoming empire and liberate all the territories that it, it, it occupied illegally and make sure that every part of Russia could go on, 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 on its own. And the second one is people who will be responsible for changes should make it very clear they will not use it for their benefits and they will step away when Russia is ready for proper elections. We are about to end, but I ask you to end in a very different area. Ten years ago, Pep Guardiola, the famous coach, uh, asked you to, to go to dinner, to learn from your tactics and from your strategies. Yeah, we had a good conversation with Pep, <laughs> yes. yes. Uh, it was a nice dinner, I, yeah, I this is, Yes, that's true. But, uh, Did he learn? Because now he's well, in trouble. Well, he, he, he was already good. It's, it's, uh, I was very grateful to, 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 to read Pep, you know, being so complimentary. I hope some of my advices, you know, were also useful, but he was already a great coach. But, you know, looking at his uh, unbroken uh, um, uh, story of success, mm -hmm. I, you know, I'm, it's, it, it, you know, it's, I feel good thinking that maybe, you know, I even, it, my, my words made a little contribution. Uh, this is very nice. Uh, and about the tournament which is here downstairs, uh, is it allowed for you to have favorites here? No, look, I'm, I'm watching. So it's just, I, yeah, yes, I think course. it's a great tournament. So I, I'm, I'm watching, you know, the youngest one, you know, Aliriza Ferruja. So very, very big talent, you know, Iranian who lives in France. Also important. Born in Iran, but now lives in France, in the free world. Um, and um, it's interesting to watch this, the, this tournament because four players from here, they will be playing in the candidates. Uh, uh, Ferruja, Caruana, Rapport, um, and uh, uh, Nipomnish. Yeah. And uh, I, um, as I said at the, at the opening ceremony, I believe that one of these four you know, probably will qualify to play play Magnus. So this is a very good chance. Um, thank you very much. Thank you. And I hope you'll enjoy your stay here. And, oh, uh, we are. Be, absolutely. Yes, yes. Maybe I'll have a chance to actually walk. <laughs> <laughs> Europa FM. Pe aceeași frecvență cu tine.